this is the Endor 5 Fortis 5 Dual Fan Edition and there are quite a few things about this which I found really interesting. Like the base, this is featuring a direct touch copper base. Nothing spectacular, I know, however, this one does so while it's a 6 heat pipe cooler and that I haven't seen before. But let's start at the beginning. There are two other versions of this, the single fan and ARGB edition, but for today we will solely focus on the dual fan one. Endorphi is quite a new company, well actually it's not, they just let their old one disappear, rebranded everything and released the exact same products under a new name. So this cooler existed already before, just under a different name. The 45 Duo comes in a relatively simple packaging, a brown cotton box with some images and a short overview of the specs. And the most true statement you will ever find, because two fans are better than one, absolutely true. And if you're asking yourself what the hell C-rated edges are, that's something that Endorphi does a lot on their fans. It's basically cutting little angles into the ends of each fan wing. We will get deeper into that once we do the various Endorphi fans we have lying around, but for today we'll focus on this product as it stands. Inside the box we'll find the heatsink, the two fans, mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets and some thermal paste. The single tower heatsink of a Fortis 5 is about 159mm high, which might seem like it's really big if it wasn't for the almost 12mm high piece of plastic in the top, which is just unnecessarily big. As mentioned before, this is a direct touch copper base measuring 45 by yeah, the, yeah, the exposed copper part is about 33-34 millimeters, but the exact width really depends on what part you are measuring. Anyway, from there the six heat pipes travel up 46 fins until reaching set piece of uselessness. In regards to the height, the heatsink isn't particularly dense, which is a good thing considering the fans are kinda slow. But hey, at least we got some more heatsink above the base, because you know, two fans are better than one and more heatsink is always more better. But the fans being slow isn't necessarily a bad thing. There are two fans included in here, a 140 and a 120 mm Fluctus fan, or Fluctus, Fluctus, I have no clue. On the right side we are supposed to mount the 140mm one and on the left the 120. Both of these are spinning at up to 1400 RPM over a 4 pin PWM connection which is daisy chainable using the 140mm fan. And on that note, why the hell is the 120mm fan just the off-shelf version of, of the Fluxus? Th this PVM cable is ridiculously long. Now, I would love to give you more info on the fans, but there isn't any. Neither on the website, nor on the cooler box, or included manual, or anywhere, does they mention anything other than spinning at up to 1400 RPM. That's really all info that we get. Unfortunate, but... We will talk a lot more about the fact that they don't disclose anything in the fan review. But for now, I can only say that the two fans on here are in fact really freaking quiet, like barely making it above noise floor in the first place. But before we get to that, to get a Fortis 5 going on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the included spaces. From there, slap the enormous and rigid retention bracket on top and screw it down. God damn is this thing massive. Over on Intel, we are going to have a great time. Uh huh. For LGA1700, you can leave everything as it is coming out of the box, but for LGA1200 and before, I have no clue why they thought this would be a good idea. Anyway, on LGA1700, we can slap the backplate behind the motherboard and do exactly the same thing we did on AMD. Space us, retention bracket, screwing down. From there, no matter the platform, add some thermal paste and screw down the heatsink. Just don't forget to add the rubber spacers on the 140mm fan cause they aren't on there by default. And for some reason only on the 140. And yes, the 120 should be positioned like that. It's, it's kinda weird that it doesn't go all the way in, but it is meant this way. You could force it, but you would bend some fins, but you could, you could force it. Installation wise, this is a yes and a definite no job. The rubber situation is kind of odd, that just one fan comes with rubber pre-installed, the other one doesn't, but ignoring that, 
the retention bracket is solid AF and everything is easy going as long as you're on AM5 or LGA1700. In those cases you can enjoy it, but what the hell is this? But what about performance? After all, this is a direct touch 6 heat pipe cooler and let's say it's going to be interesting in the least. We benchmark the cooler on our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. At 120 watts, which would be the most gaming-like comparable load, we saw that the Endor 5 Fortis 5 allowed the CPU to be cooled down to 34 and a half degrees C above ambient. This is interesting, it's quite a bit in front of the Arctic Freezer 34 Duo, which makes sense considering the much bigger heatsink and more heat pipes, and the same counts for the Enermax ETS T50. But it landed on a very interesting spot overall. It outperformed, for example, the Fuma 3, Fuma 2, Darkrock Pro 4, all of which are dual tower coolers. And if I'm not mistaken, the only single tower cooler that landed in front of it was the Nokia NHU-12A. So overall, a very solid result. But the thing is, and I already mentioned it before, the fans on here are so quiet. At max speed, you can hear them whispering. And as soon as you go below 90-80%, zero, nothing, noise floor. For a cooler, it's by far the quickest drop to noise floor that we have had so far, and that really shows. By slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps, we can create these noise to performance lines. And on here we can see what the Fortis 5 can do. At the very max fan speed, the Fortis 5 actually outperformed the Nokia NHD 15 if you normalize them by that noise. Then it had a short hiccup and from there straight down to noise floor, outperforming both the Nokia NHD 15 and Deepcool Assassin 4 at that point. So max burst performance isn't the 45 biggest strength. It's not bad, but it's definitely not like eye-catching. But the noise, that thing is dead silent, outperforming the majority of our benchmark list if you normalize the list by the noise. It might not be quite the Thermoride Phantom Spirit 120 or all the coolers that come in between that and the NHD 15, but not bad at all. Once we pump the heat up to 250 watt, it actually becomes kind of better. Now the 45 managed to keep the CPU at 66.3 degrees C above ambient, which is margin of error compared to the Nokia NHU-12A and even outperforming the dual tower giant Tough Air 710. So it's definitely a better position here. The corresponding noise to performance graph also improved. The comparison to a Nokia NHD 15 still stands, but it is much closer to the Thermoride Phantom Spirit. And at that point, completely outperforming a Deep Cool Assassin 4 from start to finish. Then we tried 320 watts, but no way, not even close, died off in a second. So overall, even if I had my doubts before the benchmarks, this is a good air cooler with an asterisk. The quality is yes and no, it feels solid enough to be considered okay. I would say slightly below a thermal right cooler. I would say. But they're not pre-installed rubber corners, the fact that the back fan has a ridiculously long cable because they just didn't bother and that the fan always like slips into the cooler and the other, and then it sits like off, it, it's not very well thought through. The whole cooler is slightly too wobbly for my taste but I can still consider this as okay. Compatibility is kind of also fine. 159mm is fine and no RAM restrictions because the whole thing is pushed to the back. That, that's kind of nice. But the performance. The brute performance is okay at best. For a single tower it's really okay. But the noise. That thing is almost unhearable under all circumstances. Which gets us to the use case. I believe this is an excellent choice for quiet builds. If you didn't get yourself a high power chip, sure, this would also work for a 14700K 7800X3D, but the fans will be stuck to max fan speed basically all the time 
which isn't the biggest problem as they are like unhearable in the first place. But you, do you really want them ramping up all the time and stay there 24-7? I don't think so. I believe this is more adequate for non-K or non-X CPUs, the type of stuff that burns 100, 150 watts under full load. For these use cases, the cooler will always be whispering quiet at all the time and once it has to work, well, you don't really need to worry about it because you won't really notice it anyway. For that type of build, great. For higher TDP applications, a 14700K combined with a Cinebench fetish, sure, the thing did 250 watts quite well, but I wouldn't recommend that considering the fan would just be spinning at max speed all the time. And the price is actually alright too. I can get a Endor 5 Fortis 5 dual fan right here and now for under 50 bucks, which is okay. Sure, there are cheaper coolers, but considering the noise to performance ratio on both low and higher workloads, there aren't many that can keep a PC as quiet as this one. So to recommend or not to recommend. For me, it's actually a yes. For lower tier chips, try to ignore the quality issues or the fact that it weighs like nothing and enjoy how quiet the fans are in combination with that direct touch 6 heat pipe copper base. Something that is quite unique, even now. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Andor Fi and their Fortis 5 Dual Fan Edition, which definitely isn't this one, I swear. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poopy Morty, that's a pretty good way to go. Addition, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to provide Andor Fi with a full stack developer for a day because I'm a web designer, I design websites, I'm a web developer, the designer only gave me mobile and desktop. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Thermal Ride Pureless Assassin, also an excellent air cooler. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.